we had covered the what was then Bill C six. I think it is now Bill C four. And this is the ban on conversion therapy. When we covered it last time, uh, the bill passed and it went to like first reading, I believe. And then they called an election. So they had to start again and they recently voted again and it passed again. So again, I was supportive of this bill before. I am still supportive of this bill now. And I'm glad that the liberals decided to do it this fast this time. If you know, you'll very rarely hear praise from me towards the liberals. I will say this time, good. I am glad you passed this bill. I would just uh, say that. At least first reading. We'll see if it if it reaches uh, the final thing and becomes law, which it should, in my opinion. Okay. Now, one of the common things that is happening in this video, because we have all the well, some of the same characters. One of the the people we're going to hear from today is a character from a video we watched when this first passed. And he's this guy who works for a pro-conversion therapy group. They're very small. They get almost no attention, which is why it's weird that like Rebel is going out of their way through Adam Seuss, their employee, who I've pointed out is a pretty strong like Christian, to go and like we need to hear the pro-gay conversion side of this argument. That seems a little fucked up to me. But they're doing it. They're platforming the pro-gay conversion side. And their argument, we'll get to it, it's, it's not a very good argument. So it's like, why, why would you come here? <laughs> why would you do this? Other than that, you still harbor a very extreme uh, homophobia at the bottom of your, your media empire here. Even though they like to pretend, the rebel, like Ezra says often that like, I have nothing against gay people. Gay people are all right. I was surprised that the vote was unanimous. Was it unanimous even for conservatives? Did they also vote for it? Yeah. That's interesting. Like it was unanimous consent for it to be fast tracked. So oh, okay. it didn't have to be, go to an individual vote. Because, it was kind of just like. So it was probably because they knew it passed last time that they weren't even going to bother like obstructing. Yeah. That makes sense. Because if it was an actual vote, they would probably vote no. Yeah, there would have still been some individuals yeah. who voted against it. So here we go. Adam Sos here for Rebel News, and I am with Jose Ruba of Free to Care. Uh, we spoke to you a couple months back talking about this conversion. This is the video we watched and, the first time. Uh, since that time, it's been uh, reviewed a few times, but not necessarily improved in any way, shape, or form. Um, and then today, uh, effectively passed by Senate. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with this bill, can you tell us about the... So... Senate agrees to fast track bill banning conversion therapy. So it's just been fast tracked. So now it's at the Senate, right? It still is not law. We're still waiting for the Senate. If I'm reading this correctly, I think that's that's right. Let me let me know in the chat if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's the status of the bill right now. For those who aren't familiar, yeah, with Grimpy Seuss does, does give big thumb away. energy. Oh God, one of the thumb. <laughs> No, Adam Seuss is, is definite thumb, thumb energy. It's so troubling. Well, conversion therapy is, has many definitions around the world. Uh, it is supposed to be a practice, treatment, or service meant to change someone's orienta sexual orientation from gay to straight, often by force. And, of course, everyone should be against forceful conversion or forceful counseling. No one supports that. So I just want to read here. This is what it says. So summary. The enactment amends the criminal code to among other things, create the following offenses. Causing another person to undergo conversion therapy. Doing anything for the purpose of removing a child from Canada with the intention that the child undergo conversion therapy outside Canada. Promoting or advertising conversion therapy. And receiving a financial or other material benefit from the provisions of or conversion therapy. Okay? Why the argument we're going to get here is that this, this amendment to this law will prevent people from being able to choose uh, conversion therapy as an option, okay? 
The LGBTQ groups that have been critical of this bill say that it actually allows for the thing that they suggest that it doesn't, in that all it says here is that you can't promote or advertise the conversion therapy, but nothing here says that you can't be like an adult, go up to a therapist and be like, make me straight or something, okay? You, you could do that if you really, really wanted to. However, good luck finding a therapist. Who might, well, I wouldn't say that. Who will do probably, it for free. Yeah. And plus, like, I guess the impediment would be that, like, they can't advertise, so it would be hard to find those people, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, but they make it, it's like a weird sort of, like, criticism of this bill that isn't actually in the law itself. I'm against this bill because it forbids converting straights into gays. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, that's, that's the thing about, like, this argument that is so silly because it's, like, the reason why you want to make it illegal is because there's something, like, there's something wrong with the therapy itself if the therapy itself stipulates that being gay is a problem that should be removed. When being gay is not a problem. And if you're someone who thinks that being gay is a problem. The problem isn't the fact that you are or are not gay. The problem is that you think being gay is a problem. Right? Does that make sense? <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's why the therapy itself, any type of conversion therapy, is not good. The problem is the bill that was passed, Bill C-4, in the Senate today actually bans so much more than that. What it actually does, it bans counseling even for someone who wants to simply reduce their non-heterosexual or non-cisgender behavior, even if they're not trying to change their orientation or gender identity. It prevents parents from helping young people, even if the kids as young as seven or eight want counseling support, uh, that would be criminalized. You can go to jail for five years for doing that. And Why? Why would a kid, seven or eight, want to change their sexual orientation? Because they're being abused by their parents. <laughs> Enough said. And the, and the part that people don't seem to, to understand, because they say no conversation. And also the thing he said there, one second, uh, awesome. like, Go for it. Oh. the thing he said there was like, uh, wants to lessen their non-cisgendered behavior or activity or something like it's just something you do is also like yeah. pretty inherently awful no he's got uh this this guy has uh this guy the bigotry is baked in yeah i mean like i i feel bad for him as well uh because it's a lot of self uh hatred as well uh obviously i mean it, it'll be obvious at least in a few seconds because i think he mentioned something also a provision called pr the promoting or advertising pr provision in the ban, which means simply uh, giving a phone number to someone of a counselor who will help them reduce their non-heterosexual behavior would also be criminalized and you could go to jail for two years. That's what happened to me when I was in university. I asked uh, one of my Christian friends for the phone number of a local Christian counselor to help me reduce my non-heterosexual attractions and behavior. And she was glad to give that number. I got the counseling. It wasn't you know, the best thing, but it wasn't a horrible thing either. And there were some good lessons I learned from that that I still put in practice today as a celibate uh, man. That person who gave me that phone number now could go to jail for two years. In addition to Jose... I learned to hate myself, and I still put that in practice today. It's just, like, there's an element to which I do feel bad for him, for whatever, like, whatever it is that makes him feel that, like, that his desires in this instant are not good, when, like, they should be fine. Like, what's the problem here? Live your life. Have fun, you know? Someone was caught reading forced feminization erotica and it's overcompensating. It's just, it's sad. It's like, I wish we lived in a world where like, I mean, here's the thing is I feel like we're living in a world now where this is happening less often, right? So there is elements that there is a reason why there isn't a lot of pushback against the, this bill that's coming forward. You know, I mean, there's, it still exists. It's just not as loud and vocal as it possibly could have been, you know? And I guess, you know, great for that. 
I wish it would be extremely reduced, but you know. Uh, the fact that one of the main, the only people is this, like, sole individual who's, like, the loudest voice about it, even though there's probably uh, uh, a lot of, like, the mainline churches, uh, like, probably Charles McVady is against this, but, like, I haven't seen anything that he's put out about it. We were joined by some world experts, psychiatrists, and people with personal testimonies and stories surrounding conversion therapy. My name is Vilna van Beek, and I'm a survivor of forced and coercive conversion therapy, the kind of therapy we all agree should be banned. But as a survivor of conversion therapy, I'm here today to also speak out against Bill C-4, which just passed the House of Commons and now the Senate with a standing ovation. Do you even realize what you applauded? I saw tears of joy, but let me tell you, I too have tears because you applauded denial of people like me to receive the counseling they desire out of free choice. This is my story. After my mom discovered I was in a gay relationship, so we're, we're going to get her story about uh, the actual experience of uh, conversion therapy. And I, I feel for this person, too, in the, in the extent to which forced conversion therapy is not good. And, like, I'm glad even these people are of the position that you shouldn't force this on anyone. So 100% in agreement with all of that. And so I'm going to be very sympathetic to this person's story. The part that annoys me is on the flip side that somehow it's okay for, I mean, like, I, I want to put it, like, in the position of, like, the medical establishment, which is, like, say you have, the reason why some of these people feel the need to want to convert is because of, like, cultural reasons. And we as a society might think, I don't know, those cultural reasons are not good reasons, you know? You, you shouldn't tell people what the, how they should be a, about their sexual orientation, and their sexual orientation does not make them lesser beings, okay? But clearly they're feeling some sort of, like, cultural push, whether it be from religious or, or whatever means, that is telling them that this is a wrong behavior that they're engaging in. But then it's like, therapy is secularized, right? Should we be telling our medical professionals and training them to, like, work as tools for a religion that's telling people that an otherwise normal behavior is not normal. And then allow them to work with the religion to make these people. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it just seems. And, that, and that's sidestepping the fact of whether or not any type of conversion therapy at all could be effective. Because that's a whole other uh, thing. Because it's likely not going to do anything, even if uh, they want to pretend that it does. But it's like you don't want to – like my hope is that what this bill does is it just eliminates that from the therapeutic profession altogether. And then you don't have to worry about choice or not choice. You know what I mean? Relationship. She sent me to a psychiatrist in the hope that he would fix me. He bound me to a bed, injected yeah, me yeah. with a substance, and then forced me to talk. This harmed me so much. I still remember it today. I strongly support banning these kinds of harmful practices, but this type of therapy is already banned in Canada. We don't need another law and definitely not a law. I will say, if, if we're going to talk about liberal cringing though, whoever this person is in the red right here dancing with, as this passes. Therapy is already banned. <laughs> I don't know. She may as well wear a vaccine suit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. But yeah, what what this person went through is terrible. Like I've I've got nothing to say to that other than like, yeah, uh conversion therapy sucks. And in Canada, we don't need another law, and definitely not a law like Bill C4 as it's worded right now. 
Right, and this is really the, the heart of the, the problem for even people who aren't religious, right, who just want to support LGBTQ rights, mm -hmm. because it's actually the LGBTQ community, community who are harmed most by this. Because imagine now, if you're a heterosexual and you want to get counseling to reduce your heterosexual behavior or attractions, uh, you have no restrictions on doing that. And you can, you can manage that, you can get all kinds of support or help, but if it's the same person with non-heterosexual I don't I don't even know what he's talking like is he talking about like heterosexuals going to canceling to become gay? Is that what <laughs> is that what he's talking about? It's like those heterosexuals could go could convert to being gay and like that is totally legal. Like how how dare we? That's what it sounds like he's saying. All kinds of support or help. I think I think that's called being closeted. Yeah. <laughs> Right, well, like, if you put it just in the terms of, like, having having supports there, but that's less about, like, making someone gay. You know what I mean? Because you're already gay. It's more of just, like, creating support and making sure that, like, you're not going to be isolated by your community becoming gay, right? And giving you, like, I don't know, strategies to deal with people who might not... Uh, be as accepting and stuff like this, you know? See, this is how we can tell that you're heterosexual because there is a conversion process. To to being gay? Yes. Do do go on then. What's the <laughs> Oh no, like I can't because then like you then you're married initiated? and have yeah, you know, like I d I'm I don't want to deprive your kids. I've been open of, about being you know? a, a bisexual so that's it's not uh that's it's i guess like what ha have i already been converted though or am i like on oh. the fence what's the <laughs> were you were you erasing my bi <laughs> Cody, i don't think you've ever told me that you're bi before actually <laughs> <laughs> it's never come up well, maybe it hasn't come up between no. us i have i've talked about it in the discord before so oh but it's never come up that I've had to blast it on this thing, but you, you just, you, you pushed it right now. You. <laughs> Holy shit, Vienno! What did Jody. you learn today? <laughs> yeah. What Whoa. have you learned about making assumptions? <laughs> it makes an ass out of you and me. True. So You're what, right. What was my conversion mm, process? Uh, <laughs> you just don't remember. You repressed it. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah makes sense. Totally. <laughs> Yeah, I got uh, it. Still, I still figured it out. Oh lordy! Either way, <laughs> just like I repressed that Jody was bisexual, so that I could make the joke about heterosexuals. <laughs> I mean, granted, I'm I'm solely dedicated to my wife at this point, so it's not like I get to express that part of me uh, very often. But it is what it is. I've decided to procreate instead. Monogamously procreate, so there you go. The process must have been interrupted. What process? Oh, the, the conversion process got interrupted. Yeah. That's why I got married. <laughs> Fair. That's that's what happened. I just like uh I think it's funny. Like it, it, this idea of because like I don't think that like being gay is like a 100% essential thing either, right? I do think sexual orientation has fuzzy edges, all this fun stuff, and people can like dip in, dip out, all that fun stuff, okay? It's like Kinsey scale stuff, right? Sure, but, but even that, like, in, in terms of like, I always make this point about like, I, like I, this, usually pe people don't think of it in terms of a choice because it's not like somebody just wakes up and is like, you know what? Today I'm going to be gay. <laughs> like, it doesn't really, like, work like that, right? So, like, I get that. But it's, like, it doesn't mean, like, you couldn't necessarily go through some motions to, like, uh, sort of, like, give in to other parts of you that might express uh, aspects of your queerness or, like, whatever, right? The, the problem is, though, and the reason why you want to ban something like gay conversion and why you wouldn't care about something like, I don't know, hetero heterosexual conversion to gay people is because 
there is no like negative societal pressure to turn people gay. That's what you think. Yeah, <laughs> that's well. I mean, but that You're is by you don't feel it. That is the move of the like conservative Christian right to try to pretend that there is a gay agenda, right? We all know that it's bullshit, though, other than, like, the wink and the nod and be like, oh, yes, the gay agenda, ha, 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 you know? But, like, there is really, like, there is no agenda to do that. And there is no, uh, the heterosexual shaming that exists is merely, like, a mockery because they are in a position where, like, they have it relatively easy by comparison, right? So it's easier to, you're not punching down, right? You're punching up if you're punching uh, heterosexuals. <laughs> But that being said, it's like, I wouldn't have a problem with uh, a, some kind of therapy to like, come to our therapy sessions where we'll make you more gay. I actually would not be like, upset with that, you know? But it's like the history of like, it, exactly the points that the person before raised about like the process that she went through, where she was being forced to be straight, sounded, it was terrible. And it harmed people. And that's the problem. That's like why these bands are important, you know? I don't know. It's a. Uh... I, I bring up the choice thing as well, because like I often find that some people. There was like a move by the, the gay community, and it makes sense to say that uh, being gay is not a choice, and then therefore you shouldn't be prejudiced towards us. But my thing is like that, that, shouldn't, that shouldn't be the thing. Right, because even if I did it, for whatever reason go, you know what? Today I'm gonna be gay. You shouldn't be able to treat me like shit anyways either, right? I should be allowed to choose to be gay. <laughs> you know? Why not? It's all good. Oh no, my gossamer thin anchor to cis heteronormativity is being wrenched by Jody. My world view is shattered. I'm sorry, no. But if it's the same person, but with non-heterosexual attractions or behavior, say gay porn addiction, there is now gay potentially a criminal porn law addiction. that you have to prove you're not doing something in order to get this counseling. So I, I just at that level, it's I hadn't turned the audio on for the video yet. When you said that, I thought oh, yeah. you just said it out of nowhere. <laughs> So, like, there's a gap in just me saying nothing and then gay porn thing. Yeah. Yeah. And just, like, <laughs> sing songy. Like. Oh, that's incredible. I, I will I thought, say. I was like, your transition into playing the video again. We, <laughs> we, we've already done several uh, no fap hour long streams about uh, why porn addiction is not a thing. So, porn addiction, not a thing? Gay porn addiction. Also not a thing. Who would have thought? I have had one person try to convince me I was gay after I was nice to them. Does that count as guerrilla conversion? <laughs> I don't know. You, you tell me. Uh, prevents adults. And here's the point that, that was different. So the Bill C-6 that, was, that died on order paper before the election, they, the government changed it. So now it prevents adults from having... Uh, conversations, even consenting conversations with a counselor of their choice that could be criminalized. The person seeking counseling doesn't go to jail, but everyone else who offers the counseling does. So how can the counseling be available at that point? Mm -hmm. So so really, and, and this is what's egregious, the government has said there's an international consensus against conversion therapy, but the problem is all the other governments around the world, except those in Canada, do not define conversion therapy this broadly. Even the United Nations, even places like Malta, this is something that is unique to Canada and the experience of the Canadian government in passing this unanimously without any public consultation, either in the House or in the Senate, tells me that they wanted to bypass hearing from Canadians because they were too afraid of facing the truth. If if they were too afraid of uh, facing the truth, why why would they do this with so much time to talk about it in between having the election and all that? And notice notice as well, it never came up during the election except for like the NDP using it as a point to say like you delayed it for so long. That that was and now it's at risk because now you're saying don't elect the conservatives or we won't pass the gay conversion thing when they could have brought it forward all along. That was the only time it was raised during the election. 
So, like, we had plenty of time to talk about it. It seems like most Canadians are, like, cool with it. Am I going to feel bad for this person like the U.S. conversion therapy advocate that became a meme by hitting a pillow with a tennis racket screaming, why, mother, why, why would you do this to me? Yeah, I've seen that video. Why? I have not. Oh, I, I think he uses it on a, a clip on the majority report, too. Yeah, there's... Uh, some of the videos of conversion therapy are, are ridiculous. Bill C-4 bans help to reduce non-heterosexual behavior. The World Health Organization recognizes compulsive sexual behavior disorder as a clinical syndrome. There are people whose opposite sex or same-sex behavior is compulsively taking up so much of their time or money. So this is the other angle that they make that makes no fucking sense with the Canadian law. They're saying, so here, here's, here's what they're trying to argue. That say you, you have a compulsory, compulsory sexual attraction. That if you're a heteros heterosexual, that just has too much sex or, or somehow the sex, your sex life, your sex impulses or whatever, you're interfering, interfering with your daily life, whatever. Sidestepping whether sex addiction is a real thing, which is contentious, etc. That you as a heterosexual can go get help. But they're saying that based on how this law is stated, that you can't go to the therapist and be like, my gay sex is like inhibiting me from like, I'm just so addicted to having tons and tons of gay sex that I can't do my work. I'm my... My relationships are being ruined. I, I can't maintain friends anymore or, or it's whatever. You can't go to your therapist to talk about this. But nothing about the bill says that you can't do that. Because the issue there is not whether you're heterosexual or gay. The issue there is whether or not sex, regardless of who it's with, that sex is the, the problem. It's not like when you read that section of the DSM that it says... Uh, compulsory heterosexual sex and compulsory gay sex. It just says compulsory sexual behavior. See, this wouldn't be as much of a problem <laughs> if we had a UBI. Universal basic intercourse? No, just regular UBI. Yeah, no, exactly. Oh, it's interfering then... with my work. I don't have to work. I got enough money to pay my rent. Like Bingo, which is why I don't like to characterize it as an addiction. The only reason it becomes like a problem is because like our society is set up in a way that it makes it a problem otherwise let people let people fuck have fun so long as you get consent have a good time sorry patient but we can't help you we can only treat straight porn addicts not gay porn addicts yeah on a daily basis, that is <laughs> interfering with basic UBI, management of their lives. Exactly. Please note, C4 would send to prison the lead author himself of the World Professional Association for Transgender Health Standards of Care, who specializes in helping people reduce compulsive sexual behavior. If this behavior is with the same sex, Bill C4 criminalizes treatment for a known recognized disorder even if it you're doesn't. not religious <laughs> uh, most canadians think you should be faithful to your spouse mm -hmm. right regardless of what's the same sex or the opposite sex remember the bill says any counseling to reduce non-heterosexual behavior is now considered conversion therapy so if you're happily married to whatever sex but you're you're having an affair with someone behind your spouse's back and that happens to be someone of the same sex you could not get counseling to reduce that non-heterosexual behavior. <laughs> There's a perfect loophole. <laughs> Again, it's the same fucking thing here, right? He's saying that, like, all of a sudden, because it becomes a gay thing, now you can't talk about it, because then, then, then the therapist would say, you know, if you want to save your, your marriage, you got to reduce the gay sex that you're having over here. And by saying reduce the gay sex, you're now going against the bill, see? When, no, the issue there is not the gay sex. The issue is you're engaging in sexual intercourse 
with another partner that is not the person you're wanting to be with. It doesn't have to be uh, sexed, gendered, or anything. It's just like the issue there is is the sex itself. So are are bisexual people just like unable to be monogamous? Is that the implication here? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I don't think that's the implication. The implication is just that if you happen to be someone in a heterosexual monogamous relationship, but then go on to have a uh, gay sex uh, by cheating on your partner, then therefore you can't get therapy to reduce your gay cheating behavior. Yeah, if you were just sleeping with other women, it would be fine. Well, it wouldn't be fine, but you could get the therapy. Is what he's arguing. He's wrong. <laughs> I like you know what it is? I just feel like they're so desperate for some sort of like gotcha in order to be like, see, look at how absurd this law is. But their scenarios are just so obviously not going to happen. <laughs> it's not like it's not like sex counselors are going to disappear once this bill gets passed. Relationship counselors are still going to exist. And a relationship counselor might tell you to have less sex. Might. Depending. I'm not a therapist, you know. And it doesn't matter what the sex is. They'll still be allowed to say it. Nothing about this bill will prevent them from saying, Hey, have a little less sex. It's incredible. This is so incredible. That, that's the point. It's not even about whether you're religious or not. Yes, you're right. The vast majority of world religions... Uh, govern how we ought to behave sexually. It's just it's it's been there since the beginning of yeah. these religions. So now here's That's the government why I don't telling these be religious gay. groups: you now have to teach this kind of idea, or else you could go to jail if you provide counseling that will live according to or help people live according to their religious faith. We're going to move to accelerate the passage of this bill. Um, Mr. Trudeau has had <laughs> four <laughs> opportunities. Sorry, what was that muted? Oh, I don't know. I would see like banning people from living according to their religious faith. I just said, oh, fuck off. I mean, like, I don't know. I don't know how the bill is going to react to like a faith counselor telling you because that's not technically a therapist. I remember when the bill was like through first reading and they were going back and forth. This was one of like the sticking issues of whether or not a like a religious counselor is the equivalent of a therapist such that it would be captured by this bill and from what i understand the intent based on the lawmakers was that it's not so like your preacher could still be like oh to get closer to jesus you, you can't be with men or like whatever right or women depending on what you know and of course they're christians so they don't believe in non-binary people but either way Right? So, like, I don't think anything in this bill is actually going to stop that. It might, because, like, I don't know. We'll see as court cases proceed, because that's how these things get adjudicated. But uh, I don't think it's going to be stopped. And maybe it should. Maybe it should. Uh, you know, I would have no problem uh, <laughs> legislating that priests can't tell you not to be gay. I think that I'm perfectly okay with legislating that, but I'm just saying I don't think the bill is yet there, you know. Opportunities. He's failed three bills. He had four times that he could have moved on this in the last five years. He has failed, and he's using the LGBTQ community in a way that's not appropriate politically. I'm a longtime ally of the community. We're going to move to accelerate passage of this bill. Well, I can't speak to the conservatives' mindset on that. I'm not there. I will say, and this is a matter of fact, one of our friends, Garnet Genius, who's been pushing the fix the definition definition, he, they did this while he was out of the country, so he couldn't object himself. So kudos on him that he wasn't uh, the, one of the uh, many MPs who probably um, just gave up, if I can just say it that way generously, and, and hopefully <laughs> they, they're, they're convicted by the, the fact that this bill is so terrible uh, but I, I think many of them just said, you know, this has to be challenged in court, and they just gave up on their re shirked their responsibility. And, and that's what what would he imagine that the conservatives do? Do you think like the conservatives on mass would have just like made a fuss about it? And what like do you think the the uh, political capital would have been there? Do you think most of like society would have been like, yeah, we we should allow gay conversion therapy? Like I just I think the the political will on this issue has like completely flipped like it's just not there i don't know that there would be uh 
large scale support for conversion therapy. So there is a sense in which you just have to let it go because I don't know what they could do. You know, I don't. I don't. I mean, I don't know if I'm off base on that or not. But I just, I just don't think there's the will. That's one of the reasons why I'm personally, along with some other friends who've experienced positive uh, help from these counseling supports, uh, are launching a new website called BeyondGay.ca. That's BeyondGay.ca. So, so it's a peer-to-peer -peer counseling. We're not saying we're professional like counselors, rhymes, but actually. we have gone through this experience, <laughs> and we're asking people who are looking for this help now that's now that they're it's trying like to criminalize it, or they have criminalized it, yeah. to say, look. <laughs> uh, beyond, beyond gay? So it's almost like it's super gay. We've gone beyond gay to, like, the better gay. We've transcended gayness. beyondgay.ca in the month of may you don't say you're not alone we strongly believe heterosexual canadians Fifth should have a right to gays. get this counseling <laughs> and so should non-heterosexual canadians that's why we're offering the site beyondgay.ca so head to beyondgay.ca if you want more information because your sexual orientation may not be a choice but your behavior always is Find support and help to manage control and decrease unwanted non-heterosexual and nonsense gender behavior. Well, that might be illegal on your site once this bill passes. <laughs> Again, this is why, like, the choice rhetoric, I think, just, it's, it's a losing... We need to move beyond choice. Be like, uh, because your sexual orientation could be your choice... Have fun. Go out there. Experience the world. So long as you consent. Gay, but with ethical meat substitute. <laughs> on that, this obviously just the latest in the never-ending ideological like a Beyond Meat Burger, but uh, with the pride that flag. are being pushed by this government and the complicit NDP, especially for those members, perhaps of the LGBTQ community, seeking information, seeking to make an informed decision, now being pandered to and treated like children as though they can't make these decisions for themselves. We're going to keep uh, touching base and see how this goes. Hopefully this doesn't stand up in court. Jose, thanks so much for this. And as always, thanks for tuning in. For Revel News, I'm Adam Sos. Now, again, they have to. This is like the always the move. It has to be an individual personal liberty choice like bullshit that they're talking about. When meanwhile, it has absolutely nothing to do with that. Because as I said, it's quite possible that you'll still be allowed to like. There's nothing against the law of like having parents that try to tell you to convert that is like completely fine by this law the only thing they can't do is force you to go see a therapist to to do the therapy that's the only thing that they can't do. uh and good they shouldn't be allowed to do that i, I would say that they shouldn't even be allowed to tell you that you shouldn't be gay but uh the thing that pisses me off is like you can say you're an ally of the lgbt community or like or i don't know you can kind of talk half the talk, but until you get rid of heteronormativity, it's still the same thing. Yeah. I've just, I've decided I wanted to read the comments because I am curious. It is, I mean, this video was released yesterday? Today's the 10th, correct? The video was released yesterday and it's only going to, it's only got 4,000 views. And we Even got, the rebel audience doesn't care about it. Yeah, we got. According to the CBC, this bill includes AIDS, as in, don't worry, officer. My lover identifies as eighteen. I mean, like, I don't. Yes, you age in terms of like when they can't consent, you can't force them to go seek the therapy. This person just decides to be creepy about it. Canada is like a weird Orwellian dystopia these days. That's. The <laughs> Couldn't that comment apply, like, to all other things? Because that's, like, what they always say. When they realized this was a huge mistake, and, and notice this account is called God's Child, okay? When they realized this was a huge mistake, they won't say, so they will change... Whoa, okay, this is incoherent. When they realized this was a huge mistake, they won't say so. They will just change it to our bill. We pay for every mistake they make one way or a, another. Okay. 
Oh, and this is we have someone say gay marriage. All right. Yeah, it's either just anti-government stuff or people being religious. Okay. So now the government truly has put themselves in the position of God. Yep. But largely, I think I, I, I don't. I think I agree with you, Vienna, which is that I don't think the rebel audience even cares about this all that much. So. I just yeah. The reason why I I. I show these pieces is just to show you. It's like they they will scrape the the bottom of the barrel of any like big bigoted position. You know what I mean? They're clearly on the losing side of this one, but they still think it's worth their while to appease whatever like hardcore Christo fascists are still like subscribing to their channel to go, hey look, we still care about you. It is interesting like the video only has like 4000 views and the major like a lot of the comments are way more religious than the other ones like yeah than like the other videos that we watch yeah so it is kind of like this is their small christian contingent type of thing yeah yep that's pretty much it it's also interesting to me that they haven't focused as much on the trans conversion part of this bill. Because you would think that that's more in their wheelhouse, but I will say, I'm glad they aren't uh, <laughs> addressing that part of it. Hello, my rebels. Hello, my rebels. I'm a good boy. I'm a weirdo.